there we go, 12 o'clock. Welcome to our um, Lent Midday Prayers today. My name is Sally and I'm a member of St John's Church. Today we're going into our third week of Lent uh, and if you've missed any days and would like to hear um, more, you can go back on Facebook or on our YouTube site and catch up on this poem, this book of lamentations that we're going through during Lent. Anyway, let's just start just with a moment of quiet to quiet our hearts and come into the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. We're going to start today with a Lent call. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and prepared for this day by a season of penitence, fasting and generosity. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you therefore to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and generosity, and by reading, meditating and acting on God's holy word. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. So, Lamentations 2. Yesterday in the verses we were looking at, uh, the writer talked about the inhabitants more than Jerusalem. And in today's reading, he begins by talking about himself. So I'm reading from chapter 2, verses 11 to 13, from the um, New Revised Standard Version. It's, it's pretty similar to the NIV. So if you'd like to grab your Bible and follow, then please do. Just give you a moment to grab your Bible if you want to. So here we go, starting with verse 11. My eyes are spent with weeping, my stomach churns, my bile is poured out on the ground because of the destruction of my people, because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city. They cry to their mothers, where is bread and wine? as they faint like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. What can I say for you? To what compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? To what can I liken you that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, who can heal you? So Jeremiah, who's thought to be the writer of Lamentations, uh, was a prophet who God sent to the Israelites and to Judah. He had the task of speaking out God's word to them again and again. They didn't like it and wouldn't accept what Jeremiah said. So he was mocked imprisoned, kidnapped and received death threats from those he was trying to help. And yet here in verse 11 he says, my eyes are spent with weeping, my stomach churns, my bile is poured out. He'd cried so much 
he had no more tears left. His whole body is racked in pain because of the sorrow he feels. I imagine him clutching his stomach and bent double. He's emotionally and physically wrecked. And why? Because of the destruction of my people, because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city. When the Babylonians took over the city, they found Jeremiah in prison and they released him. He had every right to judge his own people for not listening, but instead he lamented with them and for them. Are we tempted to judge others for their sin? But what about our sin? We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And who could judge the infants and babes that faint in the street, crying to their mothers for bread and wine, fainting like the wounded in the streets of the city as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom? Who cannot be moved by this picture of children, of babies starving to death in their mother's arms and alongside the soldiers stabbed in the street? How can it be right that children have to die because of the sin of their fathers and mothers, their leaders and elders? It's right to cry out to God. Isn't there another way? There was another way for Israel, but they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen to Jeremiah. They wouldn't listen to God. So are we any better at listening? You just have to Google where in the world are people starving and you will see that there are so many. And we read about climate change. But are we willing to change our ways? Or are we more, more willing to remain ignorant and turn the other way? Jeremiah goes on. What can I say for you? To what compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? To what can I liken you that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, who can heal you? What can he say? What can he say to them that will comfort them? Who's going to put them back together again? Only God can do that. But he's the one who's turned his back. Is there any hope? Yes, because God is a God of his word. We can trust him to fulfil his word. Right from the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God. He cannot separate himself from the word. He can't deviate from it. It's part of him. It is him. Sin is and always will be abhorrent to God. By their continued disobedience and sin, Israel made their choice. And the wages of sin are death. What about us? Is there another way? Yes, in God's word. St. Paul says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. During this time of Lent, may our hearts cry out, thanks be to God for the price of our sin has been fully paid by the blood of our Saviour, our Redeemer and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to move uh, on to our intercessions. The Lord upholds all those who fall 
and lifts up all who are bowed down. God of love, hear the cry of those who yearn for love. Fractured families, broken homes, neglected, unwanted, alone. May they know your love. God of justice, hear the cry of those who yearn for justice. Persecuted and oppressed, exploited, ill-treated, broken. May they know your justice. God of peace, hear the cry of those who yearn for peace. In battle zones and broken states, frightened, fearful, anxious, may they know your peace. God of healing, hear the cry of those who yearn for healing physical and spiritual, hurting, weakened, depressed, may they know your healing. God of mercy, hear the cry of those who yearn for mercy, convicted, in need of your grace, contrite, humble, bowed down. May they know your mercy. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. And now gathering our prayers into one, let's pray as he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now for the blessing. May you know the peace of God, the love of God, the justice of God, the healing and mercy of God, this day and all days. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today and um, yeah, again, may God bless you. Thank you.